Hi, I'm Dave Siever of Mind Alive. Welcome to my short lecture on looking at e the EEG and brainwaves of a person with a closed head injury and how we treat it with audiovisual entrainment technology. This is a case of a 33-year-old mother of two teenage boys who had a motor vehicle accident in 2011 and sustained a closed head uh, brain injury. These were the symptoms she has had, and, this are, and these symptoms were five years later when I saw her in 2016, and they're still persisting. She has difficulty remembering things, focusing or concentrating, and reading. She cannot distinguish between right and left and has balance issues. She sees strange things happening with her vision, and she's unable to work. And when, uh, Of course, she's unable to work, so that means she can't contribute to paying the mortgage and household expenses and that causes more stress and particularly in the case of having a closed head injury or brain injury stress really exacerbates impairs cognitive function even more and makes life an even larger struggle you can also see she bumps into things and has terribly poor sleep and that's part of the signature of this type of a brain injury is poor sleep which we'll look at in just a moment now this type of uh, brain injury is i call a thalamocortical disconnect <laughs> type of TBI or traumatic brain injury. And this does not show up on an MRI. So one of the extra problems that happens with these people who have these injuries is that they go to the doctor, they get an MRI done, and then the doctor says, well, you're fine because there's no brain damage, which makes them even worse because now they've just been told that it's up, it's up to them to fix themselves and there's actually nothing wrong, even though they're suffering greatly. MRIs are only about 10 or 20 percent successful in identifying a closed head injury and only typically if it's quite severe. EEG and quantitative EEG on the other hand is about 99 percent successful. Now this here is a metabolic injury or a metabolic shutdown if you want to call it that. It's also a shutdown of the networks and there's typically people with a thalamocortical disconnect do not show up on an MRI. So what we're looking at here as we see the, uh, the green arrows and we see the yellow arrows. Basically, when we close our eyes, or we're relaxing, we're starting to drift into sleep, or we're meditating, alpha brainwave production goes up considerably. That's when we make our alpha waves. Alpha waves are very important for mental functioning. First of all, they're the pacemaker, and they're like the drummer in a band in our brain, and they organize all the information flow and keep it paced just as a drummer would keep a band pace so that all the instruments are playing at the right time and giving the song a good sound. We see the yellow bars. The yellow bars are where there's an interruption in the signal. Now the way an alpha wave is made is we see the uh, overall brain all around in here. That's the, that's the skin of the brain or the cortex. And the neurons are all in the skin. And, uh, and they, when we close our eyes or relaxing, say trying to meditate, going to sleep, they will ping a little signal down to the thalamus and then the thalamus will ping back and they ping back and forth at about 10 cycles per second and that's typically the alpha rhythm. However, with a thalamocortical disconnect, major portions of the brain will get blocked in one direction or another and the signal is interrupted and they do not make alpha. As a result, they have anxiety and a sleep disorder and often become obsessive compulsive as well. So when we look at the raw EEG here, now these are the prefrontal, so the forehead. This is at the hairline from left side to right side. This is between your ears from left to right. This is a little further back again from left to right, and this is at the very back. Vision, believe it or not, is processed on the very back of the head. Now what we don't see here are alpha waves. This is very choppy, low voltage EEG, very rough looking. Alpha waves are nice, big, beautiful waves, which we'll see in a minute here. And uh, they don't make them. As a result, so they have anxiety. They've lost their pacemakers, so they have cognitive problems. They can't think clearly. They often have emotional problems where they get over-emotional and they cannot sleep. This is a spectral array here in different frequencies. Like, as I mentioned earlier, alpha occurs primarily at 10 hertz. So the database in this case, this is a normative database, it's looking for 10 hertz activity and it's not getting it. So it makes it deep blue. And what that is telling us is that she's not making alpha in this case, it's been shut down and blocked out of her EEG, her brain waves. And we, other things we, do, we also see with this type of uh, brain shutdown is we typically see phase problems. We can see parts of the brain here in pink versus parts in blue are not talking to each other. So the networks are broken. 
And that means they also struggle cognitively in those areas where the networks have been broken. Now, when we look at this case, this is beta phase, and this is quite severe. And we see real, real uh, shutdown or, or breakages in the networks between more the right side of the brain versus the left side of the brain. So probably through the corpus callosum, which is a, a bridge that connects the left and right sides of the brain together. And there will be some issues going on there where the signals are very delayed in one direction. Now, come along audiovisual entrainment technology. Now, we've used audiovisual, or I'll call it AVE. We've used AVE for um, decades and for many years also on people with these traumatic brain injuries. And we often used alpha because they don't make alpha. So we figured, well, let's give them alpha frequency stimulation and we can push their alpha up. The problem with that is it turns out is that they need to be hit with an ex a huge amount of stimulation to fire up the brain again. And if we give them a blend of sensory motor rhythm, or SMR we call it, in around 14 hertz, 14, 15 hertz, and beta in 20 on the other side, on the right hand side, we can fire up their alpha usually within 20 minutes. Now some other things about audiovisual entrainment that are important to know. Audiovisual entrainment drives up cerebral blood flow considerably, believe it or not, especially at 7.8 hertz. People with TBIs have very low cerebral blood flow. It's really no different than if you had injured your arm, let's say, and you put your arm in a sling and you're not using your arm now, you would have very little blood flow in your arm. And in the brain, it's the same idea. If billions of neurons have been taking offline and they're not firing anymore, uh, which they do with the alpha rhythm, then they're not demanding oxygen, so the blood flow is very low. And entrainment fires up blood flow significantly. Some other things. When people have a, a traumatic brain injury, uh, often their neurotransmitters really crash on them, and that happens partly, again, because uh, serotonin is tied to alpha production. If we make higher serotonin levels, we make more alpha. They have no alpha, but also these people are in a constant state of anxiety, and you know, flight or fight response, their sleep is dreadfully bad. And when we're in a state of flight or fight, it automatically shuts down our serotonin and also shuts down our endorphins, generally speaking, over here. Uh, and often norepinephrine, which is the brain's adrenaline, skyrockets as people go into like in sort of a mild state of panic almost on a daily basis. Uh, it's okay to have mild increases in norepinephrine. That really helps the brain function better. But Huge increases in norepinephrine just put people in a, a very frightened state and a, a non-functional state of being. Another thing that happens with a brain injury is that it's as it shuts down, it loses its calcium, it loses lactate, and it also loses uh, ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Uh, lactate and ATP are particularly important in giving the brain energy and making it functional. And when those shut down, the whole brain, of course, is shutting down with it. An interesting effect of audiovisual entrainment is that it drives up lactate and also ATP, but this is the lactate uh, graph here, by 250% all in the matter of a few minutes. And this might also be why we see uh, typically uh, within 15 minutes or so, people's brains fire right back up after 15 minutes of entrainment. Um, when lactate starts to fire up, it will also fire up the ATP, it will fire up norepinephrine, which is shut down during a brain injury, and get the calcium uh, gradient amongst the neurons uh, happening again. A person can immediately become functional. So here she is here, and we can see this is 18 minutes in with entrainment, and suddenly she's making beautiful alpha waves in the back of her head, and that's where alpha waves belong. That's where they should always start, is in the back of the head. And we see them there. Now, as a person wants to fall asleep or meditate, these alpha waves would also spread towards the front. But just in a normal eyes closed condition, this is a beautiful place. This is perfectly placed for alpha waves. And when we look at the EG now, we see bingo right here, perfectly placed. And that's where we want them to be. We look at phase, it has improved greatly. Um, and so that means the networks are getting fired up as well. That's, that's a very nice, and, and so everything in the brain is starting to communicate with each other, which means her cognitive function is going to improve tremendously. This is what she said immediately following entrainment. Wow, my head is clear and I can think. 
this is a pretty common response that we, we see um, with people with head injuries after they use entrainment. Now the effect lasts for about two days it seems and then it starts to slide. So we saw her on a Friday and by Sunday afternoon she was getting all foggy headed again and really struggling with her concussed type symptoms. So we got her back in the next week, got her unit to take home. That's one of the nice things about entrainment is that people can take it home. Now the more severe mental health issues are for someone, uh, typically the less they are able to generate an income and afford you know, expensive treatments. With entrainment, you can take it home and in the, for the course of you know, under $500 generally uh, for the equipment and so on, people with head injuries can treat themselves. We often do brain maps and brain maps also cost $500. So if people want a brain map just to be certain that we're doing the right thing, then it's going to be a little more expensive, but still far less costly than a lot of medical interventions are. So anyway, of course, this is called an SCL9 or Symptom Checklist 90R, which is revised. And we can see here her score is pretty high. Uh, and you'll always see things like memory, cognitive issues, and emotional issues. So you see some of the high scoring uh, items here that are higher, that are two or higher. Nervousness, shakiness, unpleasant thoughts trouble remembering things, annoyed or irritated, low in energy or slowed down, blaming yourself for things, feeling blocked and getting things done, having to do things very slowly to ensure correctness, soreness of muscles, difficulty making decisions, mind going blank, trouble concentrating, feeling weak in parts of body, heavy feelings in arms and legs, awakening in early morning. And see, most of these people are only sleeping about three to four hours at best a night. So they, they are very, very tired, exhausted people. And feeling everything is an effort and feelings of guilt. Okay, so when we look after her, look at her results now after three weeks of audiovisual entrainment, her score went from 72 to 10. And we can see here she has still has some issues remembering things, uh, a little easily annoyed or irritated and, little, and sometimes critical of others. But other than that, everything else has cleaned up. This is great. This is what we want to see. And this is what we consistently uh, see uh, with our people with uh, head injuries. But because they generally become obsessive compulsive, we've looked at anorexics, hoarders, counters, cutters, ritualists, uh, all kinds of people with obsessive compulsive disorder that was caused by head injury in the first place. And it's quite easily treatable, but uh, unfortunately, um, an MRI will not show it. And so often these people are told then that they are fine and they just need to shape up, which of course just gives them more guilt and stress. Anyway, and certainly EEG will identify this type of uh, condition very well and entrainment also fixes it exceptionally effectively and affordably. Thanks for attending my lecture.